Okay, this video is going to show you how to load and save your high score table um, and prove that it's saving by editing the raw score table and seeing the display. Okay, so this is my basic project that's got a high score table. Obviously, I expect you to have done that first. Okay, so let's just quit out of that and see what we've got to do. Now, the first thing we've got to do open game one and working from the top. Scroll down until you get to this line where it sets up the file manager. Now the default save folder is called test me. So let's change that to um, super saves or some. Or I don't know, I'm going to give it a name. So game saves. Okay, that's all I need to do in there. We now need to go to start up. Okay, and we created some code earlier. So called create high scores which just ran default high scores now I'm going to get rid of that line but I'm just going to comment it out now what I want to do is I want to try and load the scores up first and if I can't find a score file I will set the default scores okay so now I've commented out default scores I'm just going to say I'm going to need to create a blank score table first I'll say new high score then I'm going to use the file manager and I'm going to ask it to load an XML file XML is just like um, a super version of HTML that allows you to store data that can be read by most systems these days. So that's how we're going to store this. So I open it up. It wants to know what object I'm going to store. So it's my score table. Then it wants a file name and I must put .xml at the end of it. So I'm going to call this scores. Because I can't think of anything more I'm interested in. .xml. Then I need to provide it with a subroutine that I'm going to create in a minute that's going to read the scores in and I'm going to call that load scores Oops. okay so it's going to moan that that doesn't exist so I'm just going to create that just below create high scores so I'm going to say void load scores and it takes a parameter which is known as a read helper now this is the thing that's going to help you load your file so I'm just going to say read helper r I'm not going to give it a fancy name Put two braces to mark my start and end of my subroutine. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can load the file because it might be that the file doesn't exist. So I need to create a default. So I'm going to say if, and in brackets, r.read possible. So if it's possible to read, then I'm going to attempt to load the file. Else, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the default, which is why I wrote that subroutine. Earlier. So we're going to say, right, well, we couldn't load a file for whatever reason. It probably doesn't exist. Let's create the default scores. Okay, so that handles that bit. So let's have a look at how we load the scores. So what I want to do is I want to say score table equals, and then I have to do some thing called casting. So I'm going to load a score, high score from my read helper. Now to make it easy I've created this called deserialize that gets the XML data for you and this turns it into a score table object. Okay. So that's the basics. Now if there's anything wrong, like you've edited the score file and it and it's not in the right format anymore, and that's easy to do when you look at it you'll see how minging it is. That's very easy to do. Um, what we'll have to do is that might generate an error. Okay, now there's a special system we can use for that. And that system is called try and catch. So any code that we think is going to have an error that's got nothing to do with us, so usually this is to do with files, um, we can use try and catch around it. So just above this line here, where I load the content into my score table, I'm just going to say try. Okay, so I'm going to put a brace before that line and after that line. I was going to say try and do that. If it goes wrong, catch the error that happens. Very clever. You mustn't ever use this when you're doing anything that you want to run fast because it really mullers your program. So you must only ever do it like when you're doing loading and saving. Right. If we catch an error, we just want to set up the default scores again. Say, oh, hang on a minute, something went really tragically wrong. Set the default scores. 
So that will attempt to load the scores. Okay, so that replaces just setting the default scores. If we've got a file, that's what we'll do. Right, the other thing we need to do is we need to quit and save the scores before we quit. Now that code is in your input. Now here's my input code. Um, there's not much in here, you probably have a lot more code in here, but in my title screen, when I press escape, I run a subroutine called close down. So look for the subroutine called close down. It's only got one instruction in it, and that says exit. Okay, but before we do that, we need to tell the file manager to save our file. So, score table is what we're going to save, and we're going to put it in exactly the same file name. Okay, so otherwise it's never going to work. So if we go back to startup and create high scores and take scores.xml, so I spell it properly. Saving's a lot easier than loading. That's all I have to do for the saving. It isn't easy, but I'm doing all the work for you on that one because it's horrible. Okay, so we just say file, save to XML, the object we want to save, and the file name. Okay, let's run it and see, make sure it works. So it should fail to work and it'll load the default scores. I'm on my title screen and it'll flick to my high score entry in a minute. And we'll see the three lane scores. Okay, so there's my scores. Right, so when it comes back to title screen, I can press escape and it should run my save code. It's not going to work if I try and close the um, program up there so I'm pressing escape hopefully that's worked so let's go and look so if we go to my computer and you go on to documents you don't get a choice on this one look for a folder called save games there's mine if I open that what you need to look for is the name of your project now my project if you look at the window it was called template yours might be called engine 7 template Okay, so let's go back to that folder. So there's mine. So I'm going to go into there and hopefully let's just load up game one. There you go. There's my matching folder. So in my file manager, I told my file manager to call it game saves. That's what you've got. If I open that, I should have another folder called all players. If I open that, I've got this. Don't double click it, it'll load Dreamweaver. Right click on it and say open with notepad okay so this is what an XML file looks like now you can see there's a lot of gobbledygook at the top but you can see we've got maximum entries 10 and then we've got three scores we have a lot of weird XSI type and all that don't worry about any of that okay so I'm going to prove this works by changing the top score to a hundred and seventy thousand cheating a bit here if I save that so I've made sure I've saved it. Go back to my code and run it. When it loads or attempts to load, hopefully it should pull that new file in. Okay, so when my score table comes up in 10 seconds, this is exciting, I should get 170,000. That must have done awesome. There you go, 170,000. And that's it, that's it. That's how hard it is to score and save. Now, if you want more than one score table, you just got to go through these processes in these two videos each time for each score table you want to save and load. Um, a later video is going to show you how to save the data from your option screen, but that's a little bit more complicated. Okay, and there you go. That's how you do it.